I'll have a shot of whiskey, a gin and tonic, and a home pregnancy test to go, please. Hey guys, Tara here for D News, and you know who has it the worst? Pregnant women. They can't have caffeine, they can't smoke, and they definitely can't drink alcohol, though that doesn't always stop everyone. According to the CDC, one in 13 women admit to drinking while pregnant, and one in 70 women admit to binge drinking. Some states, like Alaska, which has the highest rate of fetal alcohol syndrome in the entire country, have even resorted to administering free pregnancy tests at bars in order to raise awareness about the disease. But what is fetal alcohol syndrome? And is it a guaranteed thing if you drink while pregnant? Well, not really. We've known since the late 60s that alcohol can cause birth defects. When a pregnant woman drinks, the alcohol passes through the placenta to the fetus and gets into your baby's bloodstream. The problem is that babies metabolize alcohol way slower than adults do, so one drink to you is like four drinks to them. Now, four drinks probably won't harm you, but in fetuses, it interferes with the delivery of oxygen and nutrition they need in order to keep growing. That's why exposure to alcohol, especially in excessive amounts, can disrupt your baby's development, causing growth problems and brain damage. Physically, it has some very characteristic effects. Children with FAS typically have microcephaly, which is a smaller than normal head, as well as eyes that are smaller and more far apart than normal. Now you're probably wondering, why do women continue to drink when they know it's bad for their baby? There are a couple of reasons for this. For one, most women don't even know they're pregnant until they're at least a month in, and research shows that alcohol is the most harmful to fetuses during the first three months of pregnancy. So there's a good chance many of the women whose children have FAS didn't even know they were doing them harm. Now you could argue that if you found out you were pregnant and knew you'd been heavily drinking during that time, you could always abort, but it's unrealistic to expect every woman to take that option. Another potential cause of FAS is plain and simple alcoholism. It's a disease and a devastating one that can take away all of our rational thought and make us do things that we know are bad. But how bad is bad? And how much alcohol would it take to cause something like fetal alcohol syndrome? Think of it like a spectrum. On the one end, having one drink per day or less has really not been associated with any risk of FAS. On the other end of the spectrum, you have children with full-on FAS whose mothers typically consumed eight to 10 drinks per day. In the middle, women who have had four to six drinks per day typically produce children with mild FAS, but even one to two drinks per day substantially increases the odds of stunting your child's growth, which is why public health experts recommend the better safe than sorry approach. No alcohol, no worries. What do you guys think? One drink may not kill your unborn baby, but is the 30 minute buzz you get from it really worth all the worrying? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thank you guys for watching.